Hey Art Nerds! Today we are doing another watercolor pencil review and we're taking a look at Prismacolor watercolor pencils. These were loaned to me by my friend Allie. Thank you so much, Allie. Allie makes gorgeous fantasy and D&D inspired artwork, so please check out her Instagram. It's at Ink Mirror and you guys can find a link in the description down below, as well as a full transcript of today's recording. So we are checking out the Prismacolor Premier watercolor pencils. These come in a tin box. This is the 24 color set. These are water, water soluble colored pencils. They promise superior light fastness and professional quality. It matches the existing Prismacolor palette with thick, uh, the thick lead, the very thin, and the art sticks. Um, so a little bit of history. Uh, these were made in 2011 by Newell Rubbermaid, but Allie's only had these for about two years. There's 36 total colors in the lineup. They can be used wet or dry. They promise translucent watercolor effects and high quality pigments. And I have a link to the Prismacolor site where these are listed down below if you guys would like to look for more information if you want to fact check what I'm doing. Now I would ask Prisma for pigment info, but they have never responded to any of my inquiries, of which there have been several over the years, so I don't really trust them to answer them now. The tin case has a fully removable metal lid, and as you guys can see, I've pulled out some of the older Prismacolor pencils. This is a barrel set that Tyra sent me, and at some point I would love to compare different Prismacolor pencils to one another. So um, a little bit of history. Uh, in 1938, the Eagle Pencil Company started making color pencils. In 1969, Beryl acquired the Eagle Pencil Company, and supposedly the Prismacolors are the best under the Beryl line. In 1995, Newell slash Stanford purchased the line, and they started getting sold at places like Office Depot and Staples, started to see mass market distribution, and now they're Newell Rubbermaid, and they're sold at Walmart, and this is probably why we cannot get them to answer our questions. So you can find more information at prismacolor.com, and more information at prismacolor.com slash about hyphen us. Now, Prismacolor is a name everybody recognizes, but it's developed a lot of distrust because the color pencils have gotten cheaper and more fragile. I still like the brush alcohol markers a lot, and I still use them with my Copics. Prismacolor comes in several different lines. They come in Cola Erase, which we'll talk about more in another video, Watercolor, the Scholar Color Pencils, the Very Thin Color Pencils, the Premier Soft Core Color Pencils, and the Premier Art Sticks Woodless Core Pencils. And they come in sets of 12, 24, 36 in metal tins. You can also buy the regular color pencils open stock, but open stock for the watercolor pencils themselves have been discontinued, or at least I can't find them through the Blick Jury or Google searches. You may find them in your individual store, but I cannot provide an open stock price per pencil as I normally would. The set of 12 is $13.95 on Blick, which brings us to about $1.16 per pencil. I still use Prismacolor pencils for sketching and doodling, but not for coloring as I prefer Polychromos and Colorsoft. Prismacolors were my first professional color pencils. My dad gave me the 120 set for my 18th birthday. Recently, Tyra sent me an antique barrel set, so I'd love to do a three-way comparison of the barrel, the probably Stanford set that my father gave me, and the Newell Rubbermaid Prismacolors. So please keep an eye out for that. Prismacolor products have changed a lot over the years, which is why I tend not to review Prismacolor products. It makes information inaccurate fast, and without being able to reach out to the company for additional information, it's hard to find correct info. So at the top is one of the newer Prismacolor watercolor pencils. Below it is one of the older Prismacolor watercolor pencils. These are both from my own collection. I believe they came to me via Art Snacks over the years. We have a pink and a turquoise shown here. Now, originally, the entire body of the pencil was colored with a gold cap. And I actually like this better because it makes color selection way easier. The new wood pencils don't have any sort of markings to designate the color. You're entirely reliant on the color of the lead, which is not a great way to decide on color. The packaging itself is a tin box with a completely removable lid, two tiers of plastic tray, and the trays in these are sturdier than a lot of the plastic trays in other brands. 
Both trays are removable. There's a slight indentation on the tray for removal and the lid snaps on securely. But if you're traveling with this, you might want to use a piece of washi tape just to hold it shut. The pencils themselves are wooden body pencils. There's no color indicator on the pencil, save for the lead, which is a little, and they are a little annoying to remove from the tray. They're a bit hard to grab. They're round, very rolly wooden bodies, unlike the uh, hexagonal bodies that we've seen from a few other brands like Faber-Castell. And there is body embossment. It says Prismacolor watercolor, the name in French, the watercolor color name in English. Oh, I'm sorry, the watercolor color number and then the name in English, apologies. Now, when compared to the older body types, as I said, the entire body on the older body type is in color and they seem a little bit higher end. The gold back designates as the, that those were watercolor pencils, not to be confused with the non-soluble wax color pencils that they offered. The body embossment was in gold, which was a bit difficult to read and it read USA, Sanford, Prismacolor, the watercolor name in French, the watercolor number, the name in English, and then the gold cap. And those used to be sold open stock and in sets depending on the store. So generally Prismacolor are notorious for cracking in the sharpener. So I'm going to put these to the test with the old Sanford type of body and the newer Newell body type. And I'm using a Coombe sharpener. These tend to be the best. They're my favorite sharpener. And they're the sharpener that I used with my other watercolor pencils tests. And I am sharpening both pencils from scratch. So these were unsharpened pencils. And no other watercolor pencils that I've reviewed so far have given me sharpening issues. So for the first time sharpening it, neither pencil body type gave me any issues. So for our swatch test, we're going to use an Arteza cellulose-based watercolor sketchbook. It is absolutely not my favorite type of watercolor sketchbook. Originally, I was working in the Canson XL watercolor sketchbook, but I've run out of pages and I need to use what I have. And these are just some sneak peeks at some of the other watercolor pencil reviews that I have coming up in the future. So this is the Windsor and Newton watercolor pencil set. I purchased that from Michaels. This is a sneak peek of the Arteza Twi marker review. Here is a sneak peek of the Albrecht Durer watercolor pencil review. A sneak peek of what looks like the Derwent Ink Tense watercolor pencils and the Super Color 2 watercolor pencils. So you see, we have reviewed a lot of watercolor pencils and I wanted to review what I was already familiar with, what I already liked first before doing the Prismacolor pencil because I wanted to be educated. I wanted to give you guys the best, most thorough opinion of these pencils that I could. Now, I know these are ubiquitous. They are sold everywhere from Walmart to Michaels to Blick. You see them around a lot, which is why it's important for me to give you guys the best review possible. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an opacity test. I'm laying down three, or I'm sorry, two 
lines of black alcohol marker. Uh, we're going to be able to put down our watercolor pencil on top of this without any resist issues. So while swatching, I noticed that these are a little bit gummy on this paper. It feels like I have to press harder to get the pigment I want. They're not as dusty as some of the other pencils we've reviewed. And they're not as prone to breaking as the Prismacolor color pencils, but st definitely still snap happy. Once I get to gray, you guys will see what I'm talking about. The gray color pencil ended up getting shredded, like the wood halves started to split in the sharpener. They're not as well bonded as other watercolor pencils I've tested. Now, Snap Happy is a problem because it causes a lot of wastage. They're not as cheap as you think when you're eating half your pencil by sharpening it. And you spend more time sharpening than you do drawing. So these can be really frustrating to use. I had to sharpen this gray like four times and in the end I just sharpened it enough to be able to do a swatch and then I put it aside. Apologies to Allie, I will replace this pencil since Prismacolor doesn't sell their watercolor pencils open stock anymore. I'm just going to replace it with a higher end brand. Yeah, you guys can see what I'm talking about. That is just not, not acceptable quality. And I'm also pointing this out because Prismacolor is sold all over the place. You can get them just about anywhere. They've got market saturation and they're a name a lot of people recognize. And the color pencils still have some cachet from years past. It's still a name that people hear and they think this is a quality art supply product. And I wish it was. I wish it still was a quality art supply product because I would love to see some mass market retailers offering art supplies, normalizing, making art, enjoying art, being an artist, or just loving art as a hobby. So at this point, I am doing swatches for some of the older body pencils just to see if they handle any differently. I'm swatching turquoise and non-photo blue here. And Next, I'm going to add water. Now, I am using the same brush that I have used for all of my watercolor pencil reviews, the Princeton Aqua Elite brush. And it's handy using the same brush for all the reviews because it kind of standardizes everything so I can focus on just reviewing the pencils themselves. I also want to point out that I am reviewing these as I would any professional watercolor product. So if I'm coming across as too harsh, it's because they market themselves on their site and on their packaging as an artist quality, a professional quality, highest quality art supply product. And while you're not really paying that higher in price, there's a lot of marketing that might mislead artists into a product that they just won't enjoy. And I have taught too many young artists, too many older artists who got chased out of something that they would have loved because they were using art supplies that fought them. So if I'm coming across as a little bit harsh, just keep in mind I'm coming across as a mama bear artist who doesn't want to see other artists, less experienced artists, chased out of something that they might love 
because they were sold the wrong product. So these are not as pigmented as the other watercolor pencils I've tried. Allie said this set is maybe two years old, so I don't think that's really old enough for age to be an issue. And some colors barely even budge. Now, again, since this is listed as Premier and Prismacolor acts like these are professional products, I'm going to treat and review them as such. If I thought this was how watercolors were supposed to behave, I would be really disappointed in watercolor pencils. This is partially why I did all those other pencil reviews first, to kind of set my palette, to set my expectations. And as I mentioned, I did use the same brush in all my reviews, but the paper is different. I had to switch over to my Arteza pad rather than the XL pad, but that's the only difference. And these are the swatches dried. I just want to point out that if you are an art nerd, one of my wonderful patrons on Patreon, you got this video way before everybody else did. If you guys want sneak peeks as to what I'm sharing on my Patreon, you can join me on my Instagram for freezies and check out my Instagram stories at NattoSoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P. I post art almost every day, so if you like my art, if you like my art style, that's a great way to keep up with it. If you guys have any questions or would like to make any suggestions there's three ways you can do that you can join me on patreon you can join me on twitter or you can join me on my discord channel the paint box and you guys will find links down below so i am going to quickly go through and select the colors that i want to use because next we're going to do the color wheel test and this is a great way to see how the colors handle how the pencils handle kind of put them in more of a real world application than just a swatch watch test. Now, if you join me on Patreon, you can start for as low as a dollar a month. It goes a really long way to supporting the work that I do here on this channel, buying things that are consumable like papers and inks, helping me buy supplies to review, and helping me just kind of pay the bills and compensate me for the time that I put into making these reviews and tutorials. This sort of art education is going to become increasingly rare as FTC and COPPA restrictions kind of change how creators make YouTube videos, and I would love to continue to share free and accessible art education and art supply reviews with other artists. So if you want to help me make that a reality, again, joining me on Patreon is a great way to do it. You guys will find links down in the description below for the paint box, my art centric discord channel. You guys are all welcome to join me on there as well as for my Twitter, which is also at Natto soup or my Instagram. Those are great places to leave questions and comments. So the colors I'm using for this color wheel are Sunburst Yellow, Spanish Orange, Carmine Red, Crimson Red, Ultramarine Blue, and Peacock Blue. And as I was creating my color wheel, I noticed that these are flaky and very prone to chipping. The colors are bright and saturated when we, they're still dry, but I'll show you guys in a moment how much that changes after we wet them down, after we activate those pigments and after they've had a chance to dry.
So here is our completed dry color wheel. Next, we're going to add some water to this and get the colors and pigments to move around and mix and see how well they handle. What we're looking for is whether or not the pigments activate fully, if we can still see pencil marks, how pigmented the colors are, how well we can mix colors like that blue and that yellow make a really nice green. And then once everything's had a chance to dry, how much does it desaturate? Because watercolor is always dry a little lighter a little duller than they are when they're wet but there shouldn't be a drastic color shift so while these are still wet the colors are really bright and vibrant but you guys can see the pencil marks still so that's unactivated color that never went anywhere which would mean that these watercolor pencils don't really work well as a standalone watercolor product. And then once this has had a chance to dry, I noticed that the colors dulled down a fair amount. Some mixes were better than others. The green seems to be a perennially good mix. Almost all of my reviews up to this point have had solid green mixes. The purple is perennial, perennial, generally, let's just say that, a difficult mix. Color saturation is so-so and color activation is unimpressive. So next we're going to do a color layering test. And we're just taking the same colors above and we're trying to make individual mixes. We're trying to mix secondary colors from just six colors. So we're selecting a cool yellow, a warm yellow, a cool red, a warm red, a cool blue, and a warm blue. And then we're going to layer the other colors on top of those. And we're looking for two things. We're looking for an optical mix. This is how whether or not the colors make their secondary color mix without any water added. And then we're looking for a mechanical mixture, whether or not these colors when mixed together make that secondary color. And believe it or not, that second one is rarer than you might think. So now I'm adding water to our mixes and I've noticed that we're getting muddy colors. There's really poor activation. There was no cool yellow in this set. It's kind of a warm yellow. So that kind of skews the color ga gamut. The second layer lifts up and the first layer doesn't even want to activate, which means layering these watercolor pencils is not great. And y'all can't see it, but my swatch water got really muddy from this. This is an indicator that there's a lot of filler and optical brighteners that were added to make the colors seem brighter than they actually are. Now, this is a problem because you're paying for those fillers and those optical brighteners. These might seem like a cheaper option, but you're getting way less color and way less pigment in these than you would if you bought a higher end product. So now I'm just going to do some secondary swatches here with an orange or purple and the green. And I'm going to go ahead and start in on my verdict because I have a lot to say. All right, so honestly, these are pretty awful. Yes, they're cheap, but they really don't deserve to be sold next to Inktense, Supercolor 2, or Albert Durer watercolor pencils. And in the U.S., they usually are sold side by side with those products. Please put them in the kids and hobby section. Not everybody wants artist grade art supplies and not everybody needs artist grade art supplies. I get it. That's fine. But just be honest in your marketing. Prismacolor markets itself as a professional and fine art supply company, so I review their products to the same standard as I review other products marketed as fine art and professional grade art supplies. These are Prismacolor Premier watercolor pencils, not Prismacolor Scholar. So I expect them to handle like professional Premier watercolors. 
At this point in my watercolor pencil review series, I reviewed the Winsor & Newton watercolor pencils, Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils, Derwent Inktense watercolor pencils, and the Karen Dash Supercolor 2 watercolor pencils, and I am the most disappointed with how these activate and the pigment load. I encourage Prismacolor to either reconsider their branding to reflect better on what's being actually delivered, or to consider reformulating the pencils to actually perform as professional grade pencils. The pencil breakage and shredding were not were particularly annoying and generate a lot of waste. This annoys me because this is going to appeal to a younger artist, artists on limited budgets, or artists with limited access. So they may feel like they hate watercolor or watercolor pencils based on how these pencils handle. And that's just not true and not fair. If you want professional grade watercolor pencils, skip these. It will be interesting to see how they compare against Crayola, which is coming up soon. And the, boi the voice of Becca's future, I am actually reviewing the Faber-Castell uh, Gold Faber Aqua watercolor pencils, and those perform a lot better than these, and they're also student grade. So keep an eye out for that review as well. All right. Bye, guys!